Hi, I'm Dr. Suzanne Kim. Thanks for joining me. Today I will be talking to you about insulin potentiation therapy, or IPT for short, in the treatment of cancer. I will discuss what IPT is, a little behind the history of IPT, how it is used, and why it is used here at the Cancer Center for Healing. First, let's talk about what is IPT. It stands for insulin potentiation therapy. As the name suggests, insulin is used for the, to potentiate the effect of chemotherapy in the treatment of cancer and with other medications. It was developed by Donato Perez Garcia Sr. in 1932. He was a surgeon in the Mexican military and he used it for the treatment of human illnesses with successful treatment of cancer uh, in 1947. Perez, uh, at the time when insulin was first discovered, used it on himself to treat severe gastrointestinal issues that he had been suffering from, uh, which left him emaciated. It was successful and he was able to resolve his issues. And then later he used the IPT or insulin to treat tertiary syphilis with the assumption that the medications that were used at the time for syphilis uh, and were, which were ineffective would be better assimilated. And he was correct and the syphilis was successfully treated and thus born, was born IPT. How exactly does IPT work? In order to answer that question, we need to understand that cancer is a metabolic disease with a disruption in the ability to produce energy. Thomas Seafried in his book, Cancer as a Metabolic Disease, discusses how cancer cells have gone amok and lose their ability to do normal cellular respiration in order to produce energy. Instead, it inefficiently produces energy and requires a larger amount of energy in the form of glucose. Cancer cells have adapted uh, to get this increased requirement by having larger number of insulin receptors on their cell membrane. Insulin is produced by the pancreas and in, is in released by the body in response to elevated levels of glucose. The insulin binds to the receptors on the cell membrane and opens up the channels which allow glucose to enter the cell and be used for energy production. Since cancer cells have more insulin receptors, they're able to take up preferentially the glucose compared to normal cells. In IPT, we use this information against the cancer cells. By giving a small dose of insulin, we're able to open up those channels, uh, which normally would then, with the cells expecting glucose. Instead, we administer the chemotherapeutic agents, which will be taken up preferentially uh, compared to normal cells. This has the advantage of decreasing the collateral damage associated with chemo. It also allows us to use a lower dosage of chemo at about 20, 10 to 20%. Here at the Cancer Center for Healing, we do chemosensitivity testing using RDCC laboratories in Greece in order to determine which chemotherapeutic agents are the most effective. Many times this does correspond to the standard of care uh, chemotherapeutic agents that are recommended for a patient's particular type of cancer, but oftentimes there are other agents that are, will be found to be more effective and we can use these instead. If there are, is no chemosensitivity testing available, we can still do IPT, but we highly recommend that patients get this testing done in order to ensure the best outcome. This test also looks at some of the characteristics of a uh, patient's cancer, including its ability to migrate, its ability to get a blood supply, uh, chemo resistance factors, 
and sensitivity to high heat. Using this information, we can further target our IPT and to overcome some of the resistance factors and other issues that come along with treating cancer with chemotherapy. Practically speaking, what does IPT look like? So on the day of IPT, patients come in in a fasting state, typically having not eaten for about eight hours. It's even better if patients can be in a state of ketosis. Studies recently have shown that being in a state of ketosis before chemotherapy enhances the effects of chemotherapy. We have a great nutritionist and a whole team here that not only helps patients with their diet plan, but also can help patients to achieve this state of ketosis prior to chemotherapy. Next, the blood sugar of a patient is checked and insulin is administered based on the patient's weight. The goal is to reach a blood sugar of between 40 and 50 at around 30 minutes. This point is called the therapeutic moment. And when we reach this point, this is when we administer the chemotherapeutic agents along with other nutraceutical agents to help the chemo get into the cells as well as to stay inside the cells. After the administration, we allow the patient to eat and bring their blood sugar back up. Patients do experience symptoms of low blood sugar, which can include feeling warm, hot, sweaty, uh, feeling thirsty, hungry, and feeling palpitations. These are expected and we assure the patients that it is only temporary. Uh, after the treatment is finished, uh, we also administer hyperthermia to those patients who have shown sensitivity based on RGCC testing. In addition, we've also added endolaser treatment after IPT. This is a low-level light therapy that is administered intravenously. The certain chemotherapeutic agents have the ability to uh, absorb the light or photosensitized uh, by the light energy and uh, this creates a uh, increased level of energy inside the cell and an oxidative burst which can effectively help to destroy cancer cells and makes the chemotherapy even more effective. The endolaser can also be used not just in conjunction with IPT but as a standalone therapy. There are other photosensitizing agents uh, that can absorb the energy of the light and be used uh, in the treatment uh, of the cancers uh, as well as for other diseases. This brings us to the reason why we use IPT. By using lower doses of chemotherapy, we're able to mitigate the collateral damage caused by many of the chemotherapeutic agents. These include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite, mouth sores, loss of hair, and peripheral neuropathy. The loss of hair is very disturbing to women, and the peripheral neuropathy is often troublesome to patients who develop this because it tends to last for quite some time, and in some patients, never goes away. While IPT is effective, it is still chemo, and which is toxic to the body. We use chemotherapy, however, because it is able to destroy rapidly dividing cells quickly. And so it can help in the case where we have larger tumors and tumors that are quickly growing. I do want to emphasize that here at the Cancer Center for Healing, IPT is not used alone, but in a multi-pronged approach, it is used in conjunction with other therapies. This is very important because chemo alone uh, is not usually sufficient to destroy cancer. 
So it's very important that we uh, use a, that multi-pronged uh, whole treatment approach in the treatment of cancer. So to summarize, insulin potentiation therapy is the use of insulin to potentiate the effect of chemotherapy, which allows us to use lower doses of chemo. As a benefit, we're able to avoid the collateral damage often associated with conventional chemotherapy. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you're interested in IPT, please call the Cancer Center for Healing. Thank you.